territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt they were in striking distance, and to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Charles, Thursday night game. I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. And you know what else you're looking for? A, Who are the freshest guys coming off the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. Cincinnati. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 39-yard line. Oh, they go with a tight end carry. And now a fumble. The ball's out. Fights through and now a crease. Joe Mixon on the So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. In this case, they were able to retain possession. A gain of four. The numbers for Mixon last week, 15 carries, 76 yards. And now that he's playing a Thursday night game short week, you know he spent a lot of time in the trainer's room in the cold tub trying to get his legs back for this game. 11 yards there, first down. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runners give us too. Get out here and take off. Nice job there on the tackle. Keep him to the short gain. And, of course, he got some good news this week. He was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week from last week's effort. And part of the reason he got that award, because of plays like that. Not every play is spectacular. Not every play is for a loss. Make the plays that are in front of you. Keep it to short gains, and you pile up statistics. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. And we often talk about defensive end setting the edge, sometimes even the outside linebackers. But how about here? This is a cornerback. And I think the ball's out. And this is picked up by the Browns. Burrow on the keeper. Can we get some forensics done here? Because I need to figure out. What on that ball? Yeah, on the ball, <laughs> on the guys carrying the ball. What's going on? Back-to-back -back drives, back-to-back -back fumbles. That just doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you're coming out of your play in the NFL. I don't think the coaching staff thinks it makes a whole lot of sense either. No, maybe there'll be changes, but if nothing else, there will be a few stern talking tos, that's for sure. That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. Watson now to throw. Letting one fly deep for Cooper. An incomplete and excellent play downfield. Should have been picked off, really. But second down instead. It leads to second and 10. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Throwing again is Watson. Trying for Cooper again. This time he finds him. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it with a third down and less than a yard. Here's the former 1,000-yard rusher. It's Kareem Hunt. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. He's going to look deep now for Landry. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Jarvis Landry, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. Brings up second and 10 at the 40-yard line. Throwing again, Watson. Wide open, Amari Cooper. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 44-yard line. 
Another. Just what the Browns needed there. Good for a gain of 17. So then at the 44-yard line. And a missed tackle there as he pushes forward for a gain of four. Brought down at the 39. But the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back down and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Watson going to stay out there as they'll go for it on fourth. Here we go on fourth. Watson. And that is going to be incomplete. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And the Bengals will get the football back. So they'll trudge off the field with a bitter taste in their mouths after that failed fourth down conversion. Yeah, there'll be a lot of analysis there on the sidelines. Was it the right call? Was it the, was it a Now a loose football. The ball comes out. And this is picked up by the Browns. And he's into the end zone. It's a fumble return for Browns TD. Wow. Fumbles, that's how you get in the coach's doghouse. The first one lost and it hurt. This time you lose it and it's taken in for a score. It really hurt. And about that doghouse, it won't exactly be comfortable and it definitely won't be air conditioned. No bones? None. Now Parkey for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. The Bengals drive about to get going, and they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear them. the coaches from all the way up here. They were adamant. You And he loses the football the second time. And this is picked up by the Browns. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Just go ahead and let the play stand, and they'll take that. So the special teams penalty costs some yardage there as they come out on first and 10. And that'll hurt the average a bit, as this time they're able to get him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Rashard Higgins, his second touchdown on the season. And the Browns add on to their lead. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already established, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season, but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown scored or yardage? What do you think? I think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those types of goals. They all have those types of thoughts. And then they just have to see how the season unfolds if they can stay with it. Unfolding so far so good for him. And this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. 25-yard line. We are just getting started in what should be an incredible second week of the NFL season. So much coming up later this weekend. You've got Tom Brady's home debut as the Bucks host Carolina. The Chargers hosting KC in their first game in the new SoFi Stadium. Remember, the Rams got the home date in week one. And then to wrap things up, you've got the first home game for the Las Vegas Raiders. It's going to take a while to get used to saying that as they welcome in New Orleans on Monday night. 
jet sweep. Boyd with it. And unable to get downhill there as he'll take this up to about the 37. Safety Glenn Delpit up to make the play. But Charles, you take a look at the draft class for this offense. It's highlighted by a first-round pick who provides a much-needed boost to their offensive line. And you and I both know it's the kind of pick that doesn't often get a fan base really excited. But I know who is excited, their quarterback. He won't get hit as much, and that should improve the rest of the offense as well. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Third down. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. I'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. Open net, it's complete to Higgins. And he is going to have a Bengals first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually... This is caught at the 20. And he takes this way down deep into Cleveland territory. It's a gain of 34. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And he's got his man on the out route. Now the ball comes loose. And this is picked up by the Browns. And he'll take this back all the way up past the 45-yard line. Obviously, you got to hold on to the football, but I've got to give credit to the defense there. Good job of knocking it free. Yeah, because a lot of the time we just blame the offensive players for not taking care of it. How about the effort of the defensive players knowing that guys are going to, and if they're good, anticipate the contact coming and try and cover up the football. And they still find ways to knock it free. Oh, that was dangerous. Threw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. He's going to look in zone here for Cooper. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Amari Cooper, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. They really were determined to get a stop there. Unable to do so, that makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. Now parking for the extra point. It's good, and they stretch their lead to 28-0 now. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Now this will make it into the end zone. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. Cincinnati set to take over once again. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly, they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted to practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on the themselves on this drive. Eluding the, the ball comes out. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Third and two, now Burrow. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Now Burrow on first down. Forced down to his left. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Brings up second and one. On second down, Burrow. He'll drop this one down to Nixon, and he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Dumps it off to Mixon. 
Burrow's pass. They'll contain him to just four, second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. 